Are you crazy? Hey everybody, Backjack JW. Uh, thanks for clicking on this video. Yes, um, I, what did I do to my 1911? Uh, if you've been following it, you saw that I had recently purchased that Inland 1911. Well, I didn't purchase it. I actually traded a couple of things away for it. Uh, the Inland 1911, the World War II type copy of a 1911. You know that uh, that's one of my favorite types of uh, firearms aside from a revolver. Okay, so if you saw that video, then uh, you kind of know what's going on. If you haven't, press pause right now and go watch it. It's called the Inland, 19, Inland Manufacturing 1911 with a MSRP price tag of $779. It's a hefty one to hold, especially when you compare it to say the auto ordinance variation that is a very similar to it, okay? So I'm gonna give you a chance right now, hit pause and go check it out. I'll wait for you. <laughs> okay, now that you've done that, you checked it out. Okay, if you notice now, my particular Inland 1911 uh, came in and it was a deep black uh, matte parkerized finish. I, it was not the parkerized uh, kind of off gray, almost greenish look that my uh, original World War II 1911 has, which I wanted. And uh, I've seen a couple of Inlands and floated around with them, saw some videos, saw some photographs, and it does. The Inland used to have that finish. It's a pretty awesome finish. They used to have it, uh, especially the ones that I checked out. They used to have that finish. What happened? What did Inland do? Well, they decided to do some wonderful things and change that formula, <laughs> and so ruined it, if you ask me. So. What did I do to correct that? There was some options that I was looking at, uh, Inland had offered. I was on the phone with them, by the way. And like I said, the sad thing was about the uh, review on that was that they, they actually said they had a real World War II 1911 that they were using as reference. Okay, well, I, if that's so, I would have expected a little bit better quality, but I'm not, I don't want to knock Inland too bad because they actually did do a pretty darn good job at copying the 1911. Uh, I do not regret the purchase. Uh, I do not, I'm not going to get rid of it or anything like that. I'm going to hang on to it um, to show you a little bit of what I did to it and all that and such. Okay, so um, what they offered me was to, they were going to look and see if they had one that had a lighter finish to it, a lighter parkerizing. They did tell me that it's uh, caused by uh, different variations of parkerizing. Well, in reality, I believe the zinc parkerizing is the lighter color. Sorry for outdoors, it might be a little noisy. But uh, that, that could have been the, you know, the issue. But in reality, they changed it to this black finish, which uh, I'm not too happy about. So anyhow, uh, the idea was they were going to, they said, you know, if we get one that's lighter, we can call you and uh, we can swap them out for you. You can send your other one in as long as you haven't shot it and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, you just got to pay for shipping. Uh, the way I looked at that, I said, well, pay for shipping. Okay. Now I'm going to be investing more money into this thing. <laughs> I could take it down and uh, go see a good buddy of mine and have him Cerakote it. Okay. That was the other option. Um, there again, it's more money into it. <laughs> so what did I finally do? I know we're three minutes and a half into this thing. Come on, Bad Jack, what did you do? Okay, are you ready for it? There it is. All right, now you may notice it probably looks a little different. Yes, it does. It looks a lot different, doesn't it? Uh, again, if you haven't seen the original video, go check it out. Okay. There it is. Again, what you're really, uh, what I was paying for and going for was these wool marks, which is amazing. Hopefully the light picks that up, but check it out. Okay. I went ahead and uh, painted it. Yes, I painted it. Okay. It does, and I blued the um, top of the, uh, the barrel hood. I guess that's what you call it. <laughs> I'm not a professional, but oh boy, they're making a lot of noise for us because they know we're videoing. That's why. But check it out. Um, looks pretty awesome. Okay. Yes, I did paint it. Uh, I didn't do anything that's uh, new and amazing that anybody or some people haven't done in the firearm community. Okay. I just spray painted my gun. Yes. I actually went to the store, three dollars seventy-five cents at Walmart, and bought this. The color is perfect. That actually, that, that's the color right there that I use. Um, cool thing about doing this to your firearm is uh, you can look at it. You can look at it as like, my God, I just ruined my, my firearm. Uh, but you can remember this. You can always soak the thing in acetone 
uh, I guess as long as it uh, doesn't affect whatever it is you're doing, this being all steel, it wouldn't affect it at all. So uh, I can always remove it, but I'm very satisfied with the way it looks. And as it wears and gets some you know, wear spots on it, I think it'll look even cooler being that what we're going for is the old World War II uh, finish look. But I think it looks pretty darn good in my opinion. And I even did the magazine, so why not? And everything seems to function just fine. Okay, nothing, no problems with it. Um, this is also really cool. I don't know if it'll catch it, but it has the 1911 A1 uh, government stamp on that on the side of the frame. So I'm pretty happy with it all in all. Really cool. The finish came out great. And so I feel a lot better about it. So that's the route I went. That's how I corrected my, my problem with it. So that's what I have done to my 1911. <laughs> so again, thanks for watching. I'm Batjack JW. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll do a video comparison showing you this thing side by side with the real World War II 1911.